Kia ora team, welcome to Achievement Standard 91502 where we are looking at um, causes of violence in sport with a particular focus on media in this video. Learning outcome for today is to understand and describe how media influences can contribute to violence in sport. Okay, so like all problems found within society, violence in sport has a number of different causes. It's important for us to be able to understand some of these causes so that we might be able to uh, consider what action can be taken or potential solutions implemented to minimise the effect that violence in sport has on society in New Zealand. So Jamison and Orr have analysed and reviewed a wide range of sport violence incidents and believe that there are recurrent themes that can be presented and further analysed. Over the next few slides we're going to take a brief look at some of these themes. But just remember, when we talk about violence in sport, we're not just talking about player-to-player -player violence. Remember the types of violence we discussed in the last video, and always think back to um, those types of violence in sport, so you're getting a big picture uh, of what we're talking about here. The first one we're going to look at is the use of language by sports journalists and broadcasters. So Seagave in 1997 has noted that broadcasters use words relating to violence, life and death. Words such as destroy, slaughter or bury. So this serves to relate the end result of winning or losing to life or death. Losses are quite often described in terms that suggest loss and injury of both a physical and psychological nature. These are phrases such as the team fell or hopes died or season ending. The gender influence and power structure of sport can also be seen in the way media present. This happens when broadcasters use terms like drive, penetration, creamed or scored. Drama can be created with the use of war terminology as well, terms such as victory, concede, surrender or take no prisoners. The next one we're going to look at is sexuality and violence for promotion. So there's a range of research looking into sexuality and violence for promotion in sport. It's not uncommon to see sport promoted this way with either that use of excess violence or barely dressed females. Beach volleyball is a good example and they have maximum standards, not minimum, but maximum standards when it comes to bikini bottom sizes. Females are also sexualized through the annual lingerie bowl. So examples of these are often thrown around and used to promote a particular code. This has massive implications when you consider gender issues and those hegemonic relationships that we've talked about. The use of violence to promote sport is a particularly interesting one. Anderson in 1998 identified that people exposed to media containing excessive violence demonstrated carryover aggressive tendencies after that exposure. So essentially, just by watching excessive violence, there is a potential there to develop further aggression after the fact. The next one we're going to look at is mimicry. So mimicry refers to how players, coaches and even parents can mim mimic what they see within the media. One real concern is the way youth athletes respond to their favourite players. These superstars are role models for a number of people, young and old. It's commonplace for younger athletes to emulate the way their star players handle themselves on and off the field. If they, say, if they see these players performing acts of violence, they may mimic that on the sports field themselves. Widely reported off-field antics such as domestic violence, excessive drinking, bar brawling, may be the cause of some to imitate these behaviours or feel justified to engage in similar acts. Finally, we're going to look at um, trivialisation of violence in sport. So this is when players injure themselves or get hurt on the sporting field and there is very little follow-up from broadcasters. There seems to be little concern for the player and more concern about how the team will now manage to win the contest. Outside of concussion protocols, which are becoming more apparent through education and grassroots rugby in our country, there is very little parent or player information relating to issues of injury available. 
Because of this, parents and players may assume less caution is needed for a particular activity. Also, broadcasters and supporters have a very relaxed attitude when it comes to discussing sporting injuries. Terms such as play through the pain or no pain, no gain or don't be a baby can put pressure on players to continue playing when injured. So to summarise, we looked at four issues that Jamison and Orr identified in 2009 that related to how the media uh, can contribute to violence in sport. And they were the use of language by broadcasters, sexuality and violence for promotion, mimicry, and the trivialisation of violence in sport. Uh, complete your sheet, get a question written down, and we will discuss this in our next daily lesson. Thank you.